essence noting. Essence noting is an advanced technique, uh, and I will show it to you now without further ado. The primary object here, which means the, the thing that we're going to return to again and again, is listening. And we're listening for something, uh, we're listening for something rather unique. We're listening, in fact, for something that we know we won't hear. We're listening for the ships in a distant harbor. Now, as it happens, at the moment, I'm in San Francisco. I'm not very far from the bay, so there's at least some possibility that I might actually hear ships in the bay. I might hear a foghorn. But I don't want to hear any ships. I want to listen for ships I'm not going to hear. So I'm going to listen for the ships in Los Angeles because there's no possibility of hearing them. And I'm doing this for a reason. It's because I want to, I want to turn toward something without actually experiencing it. In, in doing this, I'm going to allow the mind to become infinitely receptive. So let me just do it now and tell you what it feels like. I'm listening for the ships in Los Angeles hundreds of miles away, listening, and I'm noting. So I'm going to say listening, both as a reminder to listen and as a, uh, uh, a note that I am listening. 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 There's something there's something remarkable about doing this. Uh, in, uh, initially, you can kind of conjure up, you can imagine, maybe you hear some, some clinking and clanking of, of hardware on the ship, or maybe you hear, uh, uh, you can imagine that you hear a foghorn. Or you hear, maybe you can imagine that you're hearing the flapping of a sail. But you know you're imagining it, so this, this is part of it. And you might be imagining uh, something visual, some romantic vision of, of a ship out on the ocean. <clears throat> and you say listening, and then you're asking yourself, am I really hearing anything? Well, no, I, I'm hearing other things. I might even hear something that sounds kind of like a ship, but I know it's not the ship. So... I'm continuing to listen. I'm letting the mind become very expansive, very open, listening. And I can note openness. I can note expansiveness. I can note enjoyment, because I am enjoying it. I can note happiness, expansiveness, openness, listening. Remember, the primary object is listening, so I'm going to return to that throughout. Occasionally, whatever else I'm noting, I'm always going to return occasionally to listening. <clears throat> now, one place where this practice differs from basic noting is that if anything unpleasant or disagreeable arises, I'm not going to note it. Now, it would be essential to note it in, in the basic noting technique, but here, I'm not going to note it as such. Instead, I'm going to say, release. So, for example, if I hear something I don't like, there's, I'm in the city, so maybe I'm going to hear a siren, and that is annoying. But rather than note annoyance with, in this practice of essence noting, I'm going to say, release. I'm going to feel it. I'm not going to ignore it. I'm not going to suppress it. I'm going to completely feel it. What does that annoyance feel like, that aversion? And then I'm going to release it, or release into it. Release. I could also say accepting, allowing, or surrender. I like to say release. So I'm saying release and listening. Coming back to listening, expansiveness, joy, 
joy, release. So you see we have these, these twin poles of listening and release, and we're noting positive mind states. We're shamelessly cultivating positive mind states. So we have an agenda here, however loosely held. We're, we're frankly trying to have a nice time. We're trying to have a nice time. This is it's a really pleasant thing to do. And it's okay. Sometimes I think, uh, sometimes it's easy to get the impression with, uh, with basic noting that, that you're so you're you're so focused on not missing your aversion and and discomfort that you forget to have a good time. Well, here you have complete permission to enjoy this, and in fact, this is something that you can do in times when in difficult times to soften the mind and cultivate positive mind states. Positive positive mind states like I'm doing it now, so you'll see listening, freedom, expansiveness, peace, joy, hope, optimism, listening, <clears throat> release, relaxation, listening, listening. Now I'd like to say a little bit more about why why are we listening for something we know we won't hear. Because by doing that it's impossible to get stuck. The tendency, because our mind is so good at, at creating concepts, uh, the tendency is to freeze everything in experience into a concept. Well here you actually can't do that because you're debunking it every time. Every time you hear something that you think is the ships, you say, well, no, that's, that's not the ships. There's no way I could be hearing the ships in Los Angeles because I'm in San Francisco. If you're in Los Angeles, then you should be listening for the ships in San Francisco or Copenhagen. <coughs> so we can't get stuck by deliberately turning toward something that we know we won't see. I, I would also like to make a, a connection here between my, uh, my own personal love affair with, with a practice called Mahamudra. Mahamudra, one, one way to translate Mahamudra is the great gesture. So a, a mudra is a gesture. If you see Buddha statues where yeah, the Buddha might be holding up his fingers in some certain way or touching the ground, those are gestures. Those are mudras. Maha in, in Sanskrit and in Pali means great. So maha mudra, the great gesture. In this case, the great gesture is, an, is a mental gesture. It's an internal gesture. It's turning the mind towards something that you know you won't see. <clears throat> in, the, in the case of the way Mahamudra is, is most often taught, you're turning toward the essential nature of mind. And yet, it has been pointed out by some of the, the greatest ancient uh, sages and authorities on, on Mahamudra, for example, the third Karmapa, that you're not going to see it. Uh, for example, in the third Karmapa's Mahamudra prayer, uh, he wrote, it cannot be said to exist because even the Buddha doesn't see it. It cannot be said to not exist because both samsara and nirvana arise from it. Let's look at the first half of that. That's what's particularly relevant to us. It cannot be said to exist because even the Buddha, even the noble one, as they say, uh, doesn't see it. Well, if the Buddha doesn't see it, given the fact that these are Buddhists who are talking about this, you, you're not going to see it either. So we're not trying to see it. We're making this great gesture. So the very activity of turning toward the essential nature of mind, which can't be seen, or in our case, in order to make this more concrete, because people often find that talking about the essential nature of mind is not accessible to them, 
So my intention here is to make this concrete. Turning towards something, listening for something you know you won't hear. You can't get stuck. All that's going to happen is the mind is going to get infinitely receptive. And all of these positive mind states are going to cluster around as a result. I'll do it some more. Listening. Release. Listening. Listening. Hearing. I'm hearing cars outside, but I know those aren't the ships. Fine. Listening. Receptivity. Expansiveness. Joy. Happiness. Hope. Freedom. Peace. Listening. Listening. Relaxation. Compassion. Listening. Metta. Metta is usually translated into English as loving kindness. Metta. Listening. Listening. Compassion. It occurs to me as I'm doing this from time to time that, that just as I seek happiness and peace, everyone seeks happiness and peace. And there's something, something uh, both uh, tragic and, and infinitely beautiful about the human condition. Here we are always seeking happiness and peace. And for most people, it's a very difficult thing to find unless and until they're introduced to some meditation technique that allows them to access happiness and peace. And I feel compassion for all of us, for me and for you and for every human, and by extension, animals as well. Anyone who suffers with the condition of being alive, being a a sentient being that's worthy of compassion. And compassion very easily turns into loving kindness. Loving kindness, metta, compassion, listening, listening, peace, listening. So this is essence noting. I, I hope you try it. And I hope that uh, you get as much out of it as I do. Uh, I, as I mentioned, have a, a kind of love affair with, with this particular, um, this practice. It's one of the most beautiful things about being a person to have access to these mind states. Essence noting.